would change everything for Mars, NASA is probing the greatest discovery of humankind. If they find this, this is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. Well, this has to do with the colonization of various planets of our solar system, our moon and Mars. Uh, in the meantime, there are scientists who believe that we should be spending more time on planetary defense from asteroid strikes. But the, also, uh, there is a problem of financing. Who is going to be paying for all this? Now, NASA's former, former chief scientist James Garvin reveals why NASA is so interested in finding self-replicating molecules on the Red Planet. And he explained this in a documentary in 2018. He later claimed it would be the greatest discovery of humankind to find replicating molecules, that is, life on Mars. The possibility of life on Mars is of very significant interest to NASA due to its similarities to Earth. But up to now, of course, no proof has been found of past or present life on Mars as we know it. But recent advantages suggest the red planet advances, suggests red planet Mars, once flowed with water. And they even say that there's water, frozen water at the poles of Mars. And it could mean that Mars may have once held life in conditions much warmer and wetter than it is today. October 8, 2015, NASA published its plan for human exploration and setting up a Mars colony. The operations through three distinct phases leading up to a fully sustained civilization on Mars, which they hope to implement sometime in the mid-230s. Now, there are those who believe that that's never going to be possible because of various factors. First of all, there's no atmosphere, no uh, 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 Mars uh, magnetosphere. That means that the whole planet is bombarded continuously by cosmic and solar rays, and it would make human existence there impossible because of the fact that they would be bombarded with so much radiation, let alone the fact that there's no atmosphere. Now, three years later, Dr. Gavin revealed that the space agency is hoping to find uh, what they're hoping to find. Uh, this is what he explained in the Amazon uh, documentary, Tomorrow's World, it's called. He said that when Mars and Earth were formed more than four and a half billion years ago, they were like brothers in their solar system with possibilities on how they could grow up to be what they are like today. Now, I wouldn't say that, but anyway, he's got a, his own opinion uh, because of the fact that it's much smaller and it's, everything is different. So he says, so now we have a tale of two diversions, objects and yet diverse objects and yet still sharing some of the basic building blocks. But Mars is a lot smaller than Earth. And one of the things we've recognized across the solar system is that size does matter, he says. He goes on to explain planetary size has a bearing on how the atmospheres of the planets evolved. He explains to viewers why the dwindling atmosphere may have wiped out any living organism on the surface. And I just, uh, I'm uploading now a video having to do with um, how NASA explains that the atmosphere of Mars could have been stripped by solar, solar wind. And uh, the, if it did have atmosphere, that's perhaps how it uh, is no longer there. Now, he said uh, concerning this, Mars, he says, is in fact six times smaller than Earth. Its smaller core is cooler than that of our planet. Over time, Mars cooled faster and its volcanoes finally died. And with nothing to feed it, the atmosphere gradually dissipated into space leaving Mars at the mercy of cosmic rays and the cold of space. Mars is now an arid, lifeless desert. On the surface, the average temperature is minus 63 centigrade. The atmosphere, rich in CO2, is 100 times thinner than the Earth, and in this hostile environment, there is apparently no place for water, which is the source of life. 
However, nevertheless, NASA hopes to probe below the surface to uh, which we will visit next uh, next 10 years in 10 years and they believe some sort of life could have survived for millions of years in this barren condition. Dr. Gavin explained why the future mission could be a huge step forward in understanding the history of our solar system. He said if we were to know that self-replicating molecules that we could call life on a planet existed on Mars, that would be the greatest discovery in the history of humankind, and it would change everything. So the Mars mission has three phases. The first phase, of course, is now underway, and it means that everything that goes on on Mars is reliant on what takes face, uh, place from Earth. And this is a tremendous amount of cost as well. And once you have a colony up there, you just can't let it run out of money. You have to keep sustaining it. That is, of course, going to be a drain on whoever does that, because it's not a little bit of a cost. Now, Earth Reliant Phase, this will continue to use the International Space Station until 2024, validating deep space technology, studying effects of long-duration space missions on the human body. We've already found that it ages faster in space, a lot faster. Now, the second stage is the Proving Ground ventures into uh, cis lunar space for most of its tasks to test deep space habitation, validate capabilities required for human exploration of Mars. And the third phase, Earth independence, includes long term missions on Mars with surface habitats, habitats in other words, the colony with everything uh, being uh, taken from Mars itself. That um, they, uh, the colonies would only require routine maintenance from Earth and the harvesting of Martian resources would be taking place for fuel, water and building materials. Of course, we're at about the atmosphere, what would people breathe, what would people drink for water and what would people eat for food? And let alone that, let's say you have all that, what about your heating? And all, these are the, fund the fundamental things for human life on Earth are not there. I'm sorry to laugh, but they, <laughs> this is what one of the Nobel Prize winning scientists recently said, that it's just not possible for, uh, for people to be living on Mars. It's just a fantasy. So maybe we should be working on our Earth protection system from asteroids and comets instead. Now, one of the things that we should look into, really, I mean, is the Mars moon Phobos. It's got, Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos, this little one. But Phobos looks like it's a, an artificial constructed type of a spaceship. It's got, it looks like some kind of a metallic uh, surface. It was bombarded on one side, it looks like, by some kind of a celestial body, as you can see here at the 3 or 4 o'clock position. And uh, it's got grooves on it. People say the grooves, are the, the astronomers say the grooves on it are from Asteroid strikes, yeah, but if they're asteroid strikes, how can the grooves be from one side to the other in perfect lines and in the perfect depth, the same depth everywhere? I mean, that doesn't make sense. What did the asteroid do? Get stuck on the surface and just go grooving it, like cutting it like as if you're skinning an apple? In the meantime, Phobos has a monolith. This is the monolith of the Mars moon Phobos. Perhaps this is what we should be looking at. Who constructed this thing? Who put this thing there? Look at how, how tall this thing is. This is what uh, Buzz Aldrin was telling us about, saying perhaps we should go and uh, visit these, this thing on the moon, on Phobos, and say, who put that there? These are NASA pictures. The monolith is a NASA picture. The moon Phobos here is a NASA image. So why not go there? Go to the moon first, see what you can find out, and uh, then go to Mars. I don't know. What can I tell you? That's my opinion. At least when you go to Phobos and find the monolith, you know where it is, you'll get somewhere. Anyway, I'll leave links below for you for this.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.